Module 2, Lesson 6, More Division Stories. So yesterday we wrote division stories and focused on using measurement division. And in this lesson we are going to write division stories and we are going to focus on partitive division. And so we are going to show we can understand division of fractions by creating word problems. And in this case we will be representing partitive division problems. We are going to go through the same basic steps we went in the last lesson. We are going to select a partitive division problem, model it out, find the answer, choose a unit, and then we will come up with a situation that could be represented by our division expression. So taking a look at example one, 50 divided by 2 thirds, and we are going to go with a partitive interpretation. And that is going to tell us 50 is 2 thirds of what group? Because remember, in partitive division, we're answering the question, what is the size or the value of a group? And so 50 is 2 thirds of what group? And if I were to draw a model, um, I have this very clear statement here, 50 is 2 thirds. So I'm going to draw thirds. And I have 2 thirds here. And I know that 50 is those 2 thirds. And I would like to know what is the total. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Because 50 is 2 thirds, what is the total of one group? instead of two-thirds of a group, because 50 is only two-thirds, and I'd like to know a group size. So looking at the answer here, I can see that on my tape diagram, 50 has been divided into two units here, two sections, and 50 divided by 2 is 25. So each of the units on my tape diagram is going to be equal to 25, so my total is going to be 75. 50 is 2 thirds of 75. Now a unit, so what am I going to count? Um, I think today I'm going to use dollars. 50 is 2 thirds of, 50 dollars is 2 thirds of 75 dollars. So thinking of a situation based upon the model, um, let's see. So let's say that I, uh, I went shopping. I spent $50 on donuts, because everything in life is about donuts. And... This was two-thirds of my budget. And so then, what was my budget? So I know that $50 is two-thirds of my budget, and I'm trying to figure out what my whole budget was. And we of course have already done all the work over here and found that my whole budget was $75. All right, taking a look at exercise one. So in class, you and your neighbor, you and your partner would repeat this process once again using the same dividend, 50 and the same divisor, two-thirds, and you would create your own story problem. Now we've already done some of the work here. We already came up with an interpretation, so you don't need to do that. And we already came up with brain freeze here for a second. I'm going to jump back and look at my steps. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I've already got the model and I've already got the answer. 
I already got the model. I've already got the answer. So where your new work comes in is what unit you use and what situation. So you've only got two steps that you need to work on here. And try and think of situations that might connect to your real life. Um, I know uh, spending two-thirds of my budget is probably not a real life situation. Um, but I want to leave open to you the things that may be real life to you. And if I start using some examples, then maybe I take away one of your ideas. All right, example two. Here we have one half divided by three fourths, and we are looking for an interpretation. And once again, we are going to work with partitive because that's our objective today. So one half is three fourths of a group of what size? So half is three-fourths. How big is the group? So looking at a model here, half is three-fourths. Uh, now one of the things that we've worked on or found useful is to have common denominators so I'm going to take this half here and I'm going to scale it up to be 2 fourths divided by 3 fourths. So as I work with my model, it should be a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. And it says half is 3 fourths. So half is 3 fourths. So I need some fourths here. And so here is my three-fourths. And I know that half is equal to that three-fourths. So my half is three-fourths. And of course, I'm trying to find the complete group size here. All right, so now that I've got a model, I need to interpret my model. I need to figure out what it's telling me so that I can find the quotient. How big is one group? So as I look at my half, which I'm going to turn into, well, let's do it this way, half, and that's equal to 2 fourths. I can see that my half has been divided into three parts. So I need to figure out what is one half divided into three pieces. So I've got a second division problem going on here that I need to think about. So I'm going to switch colors and come over here. And I've got half, and I need to divide my halves into three pieces. And I can see that my half divided by three is, there are six total pieces in the whole, so each of these is one-sixth. So I've got one-sixth, one-sixth, and one-sixth. And of course, this last one will be one-sixth. So I had to do a little bit of reasoning here wasn't quite as friendly as some of the other problems that we have worked on. So I can see then that my whole is going to be four sixths. So two thirds divided by three fourths is four sixths. So half is three-fourths of four-sixths. And now I need to come up with a unit. And I think on this one, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to assign this half right here to be hours. So something like uh, a 
I have walked for one half hour. This is three fourths of the time I need to walk. I really should be exercising more. How long do I need to walk? So I have set up here my half hour is three fourths of some time that I need to walk and I'm trying to figure out how long I need to walk and I've already figured that out. I found the answer. I will need to walk four sixths of an hour. All right, so exercise two, uh, using the same dividend and the same divisor, so one half and three fourths. Work with a partner and create your own story problem. Try out a different unit. Um, I used hours here. Uh, try a different unit. Think about real life situations, things about things that you count, and and see what you can come up with. Of course, we have already come up with your interpretation. We're going to work partitive division, and we've already come up with your model, and we've already come up with the answer. So you need to come up with your unit and your story. All right, so kind of reflecting back on the lesson, um, how have we extended our work with division with fractions in this lesson? Uh, we moved from measurement division into partitive division. Yesterday we worked on division stories for measurement division, and we've taken a step into partitive division. Uh, we have chosen units, and we thought of a story problem that would fit. Um, Self-reflection question, what were your biggest challenges when writing story problems involving division with fractions? This question applies to Lesson 5 and Lesson 6. What, what was the real challenge um, for you? All right, looking back on the I can statements, I can show I understand division of fractions by creating word problems. And one of the hidden I can statements here, and maybe I need to change these so that it's, it's clearly stated, um, by writing word problems, hopefully you can read word problems and solve them. You can look and say, oh, I see they're setting up a part of the division problem here. Oh, I see they're setting up a measurement division problem. So by hopefully by creating them, we will become better problem solvers. And of course, hopefully we can get inside the head of the people who have created these problems. Hopefully we can go backwards and see, okay, they set up a situation. What unit did they use? What answer? And, and at this point it might get a little bit out of order, but you know, what is their situation? What is their units? And then how could you model it, find the answer, uh, let me try that again. Set up your situation. Choose a unit. Identify the interpretation. Are they setting you up for measurement or partitive? Then use a model and find the answer. So hopefully by creating problems using this five-step process, we can go a little bit in reverse and decode the mystery of word problems using some reasoning and logic so that we can solve problems. So this concludes Module 2, Lesson 6. Make sure you complete your problem set. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher.